Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about what is a septic system. I get this question a lot of what are they, how do they work, where are they found, what do they do, right? Let's get into it. So, what is a septic system? Well, you got to deal with your water in your house somehow, right? So you have your water that comes in, let's just say it fills a toilet, bathtub, kitchen sink, whatever. Well, as you have water coming in, you also have to get rid of the water somehow. That's where the septic system comes into play, right? So on a city, you're going to have city water that comes in and a city sewer pipe that goes out. Basically, all your flushes of the toilet will go into one pipe. It'll go out to the main pipe in the middle of the road. And then the city deals with all the solids and all the other liquid that come with it. Well, if you're in the middle of nowhere, or even sometimes if you're within 15, 20 minutes of the city, there may not be a municipal supply to deal with your liquid. So what do you do? So what they'll do is they'll generally build a small treatment plant on your, on your house, right? You'll see a large concrete box that captures all the solids and you'll have an absorption system that deals with all the liquids. That's the simple version, right? Generally, you'll see this on a lot of homes uh, in our surrounding counties, uh, right? So even Baltimore County has plenty of houses that are on sewer and they're on septic, I'm sorry. That's perfectly fine. You'll usually see it in more rural locations. Uh, generally, uh, how you'll see that if somebody has a septic or a well, you'll start seeing a lot more pipes sticking up in their yard. Perfectly normal, perfectly function, per, uh, fine. Each of those pipes is going to serve a different function, right? So with a septic system, you're going to have two parts that work independent of one another, but they work together. Of course, there are more advanced systems, like there are a variety of other systems that are out there, but we're going to talk about the simplest, basic, gravity-fed septic system. So you're going to have a tank, right? Big concrete box, either 8x4, 10x5, whatever. Every time you flush a toilet, run a sink, bathtub, you name it, all of that liquid plus the debris will go into the tank and then it'll settle, right? You'll have heavier stuff falls to the bottom as your sludge, right? You'll have lighter stuff up top, which is your scum. That's going to be all your fats, hairs, oil, greases. The sludge is all the fun stuff you can think of. And in the middle, you're going to have something called effluent, right? Basically, the tank's goal is to strip away all of that debris, let it settle to the bottom of the tank, and float up top so we can clarify the liquids. In the front of the tank, you're going to have a thing called a baffle, right? The baffle's job is to slow everything down to give it time to basically separate. The back baffle, it's going to be almost identical, but it'll go about 18 inches into the liquid in our area. I don't know about your area or any other states, but in Maryland, it's 18 inches below the surface is where it needs to be, right? The scum will basically get stopped by that baffle. It's just physically a barrier to where when the water or when the scum hits, it can't get through, can't get into the pipe and into the drain lines. Septic systems generally will have two to three lids on it. You'll have one lid in the front, back, and a big lid in the middle. Older septic systems, you'd have a really big lid in the front, really big lid in the back, and then you just kind of go from there. The baffles uh, will basically prevent any debris from leaving the tank. Uh, but if you want to visualize what's going on inside of a septic system, just take a bottle or a cup of water, some bread yeast, mix it into that water, give it a good mix, put it on the counter. If you let that water sit for, I don't know, half hour, 60 minutes, you'll see that the darker brown yeast layer will sit on the bottom. You'll have a lighter brown in the middle and you'll have like this white foamy stuff on the top. Same concept as what's going on inside of a septic system. Generally, uh, the average course of a family of four will want to pump out their tank in our area every two to three years. If you have more people enter the home, you want to decrease uh, the time between pumping. If you have less people in the home, you increase the time between pumping. Generally, I recommend six months per person. Right, so if you have uh, five people moving in, you want to go two and a half years. If you got six people in there, or, or sorry, you want to knock it down a little bit. So if you're on a three-year schedule for a family of four, if you got five, two and a half years, six, two years, etc. Uh, generally, in our area, it's two hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on who you go with. Human waste and toilet paper is the only thing that should be going inside of your septic system, right? If it's questionable or not one of those two things, you're going to run into some problems uh, where either you get a clog or your solids are building up too much and then you got problems with the drain field. So septic systems have the tank to capture the solids. Why, you might be asking. Well, the reason why is that the solids are what cause the drain field to fail. 
So the first part's the tank, that captures the solids. Now you gotta deal with the liquid. So every gallon of water into a septic tank, it's gotta go somewhere. So you put one gallon in, one gallon will outflow through the outlet line into the distribution box. Now in our area, most homes will have two or three drain lines. What a drain field is, is going to be about two feet wide, six to 10 feet deep, 40 to 100 feet long. They'll backfill it with number two limestone in a perforated pipe. Now that's in our area, every area is a little bit different, right? Those uh, distribution boxes are what connect the outlet line from the tank to the inlet lines for the drain fields. And literally all it is is just a little tiny shoe box that the water goes into, slows down, and then evenly disperses into the drain field lines. The drain field is going to have perforated pipe so that way the water can get out. So it'll use the front of the trench first, the water will go through those perforations, and the stone's just there to open the soil up to give the water some space to work its way out, right? The filtering media is actually going to be the soil. Now, over to the course of 30, 40 years, a little bit of stuff called biomat, biologic material, poo, is going to work its way out of the tank and into the drain fields. And what will happen is it's real sticky and tar-like, right? So, like, once it gets on your clothes, it leaves this black slime on your clothes that are hard to get off. Well, while it's wet, it's basically non-porous. And so what it'll do is it'll plug up the soil and the stone and it'll make it to where the drain field can't get rid of the liquid. Additionally, if like you have an excessive volume of water, like if you have rainwater and stuff going on top of the trenches, yeah, it's going to swamp it and it can't do anything. It doesn't matter if there's biomat or not. If you swamp the system, well, you're done, right? Now, the trench will use because it's gravity fed right again there's a variety of advanced treatments out there that are not gravity fed but in this particular circumstance we're discussing gravity so the front of the trench is going to get used first because water will always go where the path of least resistance is so the front of the trench gets used first when that gets oversaturated it'll move to the middle of the trench to the end of the trench and then eventually after 40 50 years it'll be so saturated it's got nowhere else to go but back towards the house Septic systems fail in some weird ways. Sometimes it'll surface, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll back up to the tank. Sometimes you'll have dark lines in the grass that are super wet, sometimes you won't. Most commonly, as long as you're getting it pumped out regularly, most pumpers will be able to tell you like, hey, the toilet paper is not where it belongs. You might want to investigate a little bit further and just see what's going on, right? When it comes to the groundwater, like we were talking about before, the county requires the installer to do what's called a perk test. That's essentially to see what does the soil look like and what kind of groundwater are we working with? How is everything dispersing? And it basically it makes it to where you know that you're not putting a septic system into a one foot water table and that way it's guaranteed to back up, right? So if you have rainwater discharge from like your roof, from gutters, from a swale in the yard, if you're dumping all of that rainwater onto the trench, you're gonna oversaturate it. What do I mean by oversaturating? So when you're designing a septic system, you're gonna design it in our area about bedroom count. So every bedroom is equivalent to about 150 gallons of water design flow. So if you have a four bedroom home, that should mean that your system's designed to accommodate 600 gallons of water per day. Well, if you dump an entire, you know, 600 square foot roof on top of a trench, I don't know how much water that is, but when it rains heavy, it certainly looks like a lot of water. You dump that over the course of an entire afternoon shower. Guess what? You might have just exhausted that 600 gallons per, uh, per day flow, and now it's oversaturated. A lot of septic systems will do fine if you do that once or twice. But if you do that over the course of 10 or 15 years, it will de decrease the lifespan of the system because you're not giving it enough time to let itself dry out. It's not designed for that volume of water. So it's important to make sure that if you're, if you're occupying a house or purchasing a home, take a look at the house when it rains. Just wait for it to rain, walk around, see what's going on, see how the water flows. So we can kind of get an idea, is, is it flowing onto the drain field? Maybe I have a leak in my foundation that I didn't know about. You want to kind of see what's going on. So septic systems are designed for homes that don't have access to public water or public sewer. They're basically like a small treatment plant in the ha in, on your property to deal with the wastewater and the sewage. They're basically about the same cost as installing a new uh, sewer line. They're a little bit more upfront cost. However, you don't have the ongoing uh, payment like you would for public sewer. Public sewer, you're paying every single month forever, right? Septic systems, yeah, you, you spend the money up front, but you're only spending two, three hundred dollars every couple of years, and that's it. Other than that, you're just kind of you're good to go. 
I hope that this kind of gives you guys a little bit more clarity on what is a septic system, how do they work. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I try to get to all of them as quick as I can. Um, I have content posted daily on the world of well and septic. Please hit that like button, subscribe. Till next time, guys.